Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Go video. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how I use Go with NeoVim. Most of the plugins that I'm going to be using use a patch font that is coming from Nerd Fonts. The one that I'm using specifically will be the one coming from JetBrains. And this is important because some of the plugins support the value that represents an icon inside the font itself. So for example, if you are opening a Go file, it will show the gopher. If you are opening like a markdown file, it will show MD and those kind of things that indicate the type associated to the file itself. Like I told you, the important bit will be using a patch font in this case, which is right here. And this one is using the JetBrains Mono Nerd Patch font. You can use any of the fonts that you like. It's most likely it's already supported. Next, let's take a look at the configuration of the plugins that I use. A link to this repo will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out. Now, the way I have structured my configuration is that I have an ini.lua file that loads all the plugins that I need. In this specific case, it's pretty straightforward. It's just requiring all the plugins that are under the plugin folder that happens to be under the Lua folder. Specifically, there is a setup file, that's, which is right here, that includes all the details that we're going to be defining for loading the files, for configuring some of the files, and some other details that allow you to, to refer to those configurations as well. I want to show you first how that works. So we open that file. What I'm using here as the plugin manager is something called Packer. One plugin that I want to show you first will be this one, Capuchin. And what got pushing does, as you may imagine, is just the look and feel. It's the theme of my NeoFim that I'm using. There are a bunch of different cool configurations that I can use. And the cool thing about Catpuchin is that it supports a three-seater plugin. And I will show you what that means. It's a way to color different sections that are parts in your programming file. So this is important because maybe you want to show colors that are applicable only to variables. Or maybe you want to show a style that is only applicable to function names and those kind of things. So it gives you some sort of uh, flexibility when you're trying to configure those things. Now, the way it is configured is that I have a Catpuchin file up here that defines a theme. And like I was telling you, there are some configuration styles that are applicable in this case to comments, in this case will be to functions, and there is a type configuration down here. So you can configure it the way you want it. And again, overrides and whatnot. It's kind of pretty straightforward. The documentation is well written, so you can refer to it specifically when you have some time. Next is the productivity plugin that I want to show you. For this one, we have one called Barbar, Bar, which is a tab line plugin that happens to be using this plugin called Web Icons. And if you remember when I was telling you about the patch font that happens to be including some details about the file types and whatnot, this is when that comes into place. If you notice above it in on the tab section, you will see that there are some icons. And also you will notice that below here, there are some icons as well. This Web Icons plugin is actually used all over the place by different plugins that are used to represent either file types or names or those kind of things. This plugin is really useful because it allows you to give you numbers like the one that is right here, give you a name that is next to it, give you an actual icon. The way I configure it in this case is applicable to me, to what I want to do. Uh, there are different options that you can have, like having like a small X buttons next to the tabs that indicate that you can close them, you can rearrange them. I disable all of that because I don't typically do any of that. That really doesn't work for me. Let's go and look at the next plugin called Lua Line. Lua Line, which happens to be here, is represented by the line all the way down here, which is the status line. And this status line indicates the name of the file, if you're running a command, if the line, those kind of things. So it also can be configured with uh, to support Git, the status of the file, branch, and you can do a lot of bunch of things. So it's, it's also really useful. The way I have it configured, it's that it really doesn't have too much. You just have the theme and that's pretty much how I use it for. The documentation is really pretty straightforward and it has a bunch of different examples that you may want to look at because it's really cool. Next, let me show you another one that you have seen already, which is this one, the MVIM tree. So the MVIM tree is a plugin that is used like a file browser, sort of. The way I like it and if you're familiar with Nerd tree, it's sort of equivalent. You don't have to necessarily have it the way I do have it in this case, which is sort of like a big, you know, floating rectangle. You can have your typical left side or right side or having a book combination of both that can be used to browse files. Now, the next one I want to show you is one called Telescope for doing some fuzzy search. 
So Telescope is a cool plugin because it allows you to search files by a fuzz search. You can also search by variable names, function names, and the actual code itself. So the configuration is a bit much more complicated, but again, it's in the documentation and you can refer to all of this. You will see that there is a, a bit of few, I have a few key maps already uh, loaded and configured that are used for the things that I was telling you, like searching files, searching buffers, searching by variable types or names and those kind of things. Now it's time to talk about those plugins that I use for software development specifically. And the first one will be this one called Git Science. And this is easy to demonstrate. It allows you to show the status of some changes on the left side of your window. So right here you will see that there is at the moment a green line that indicates one line that was added. If I decide to remove this, you will see that now is uh, remove. So this is the whole point of having a git, uh, git signs. It's a quick way to see what lines in your file were modified when you happen to be using git as your version control system. Finally, the last plugins I want to show you will be those related to the actual software development. It's a blog of plugins that I have right here. Uh, are, those are the last ones. These are, as you may imagine, the ones that require the most configuration and details. However, these are really cool because they allow you to support things such as auto-completion, warnings, some validations as well. The important bit is that because the LSP, which is Language Server Protocol, may support multiple different languages, you can configure those. In this case, this is applicable to the Go Please, which is the Go server, but I also have some configuration as well for the Python one, which is, in this case, pretty straightforward. If I open an example in Go, so if I open internal, I go to the params, you will notice that I can do things like, for example, get the auto completion. And this auto completion also includes icons that indicate, well, there is, there is a print, a snippet, a method, and some calls to fields and whatnot. So, and make a mistake like the one I hate. I just did, I didn't, you, I didn't complete the line, I'm getting immediate feedback from the actual uh, editor. Now, if I want to rename, let's say I want to rename this description, I rename to description X, so it's all the way down here. So if I create rename X, it will go and rename all the way. And you, as you may see, I have a bunch of different ta uh, tabs open that indicate the file was renamed, I need to go back and say follow them. So uh, just save all. So, uh, that's fine. So this is really cool because you can also get information about uh, things like documentation, which I don't think I have for this one. Well, I do have, which is the default documentation. But if I have uh, other important things, like if I go, for example, and I want to see what types implement this interface, I can also say, I can also get that information from the go please as well. So I, this interface is implemented by the memcache task type and the Postgres task type. So that, that's really cool in my opinion. So see, this is it. These are the plugins that I use. And again, the link to all of this is in the description of this video. Hopefully you find it useful. And as usual, thank you for watching. Take care, stay safe. Keep it up and don't give up. See ya.